I'm Dima Danilov, and today I'm going to talk about the considerations when working with the shared pointers. As everybody does, I'm going to talk about myself. My name is Dima. I'm a software team leader working at GK8. We're a blockchain and digital asset security company. And we developed the world first through a gap mode, uh, which basically eliminates all the potential cyber attack vectors. Besides that, I'm working with the C++ for the last 18 years, and most of the time I've been enjoying it, except the GCC errors, compilation errors. <clears throat> so, a bit of a background of uh, shared pointers. As you guys probably know, the C++ doesn't, doesn't provide any garbage collection management mechanism, and it has some semi-automatic management which can be achieved by something, this technique called air aid I, 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 I with the weirdest name ever. Resort acquisition is initialization, which was being invented and coined by Bjorn Strauss-Rupp and Andrew Koenig. And the first version of shared pointer, as I know, came with the boost library collection, and it existed even before they had official versions. You can check on their website. The only alternative that the C++, the standard C++ could provide by then, was the auto PTR, and as uh, Mike said in the previous lecture, it was quite useless, especially if you were using it with uh, any sort of standard container. And luckily it was deprecated in C++11 and completely removed from C++17, unless you turn on some weird compilator flag that says that please use it. As a result, the shared pointer, you can see it a lot in, in code bases, especially large and old code bases, because that was the only use, useful smart pointer that back, back then. This is why I'm gonna talk about it and uh, just bring some light on some internals and, and some, some things that might happen if you use it. So what is a shared pointer? Shared pointer is a smart pointer that retains ownership for an object through a pointer. Uh, sounds good. So basically it means that a few shared pointers may point to, similar, to, to, to a single piece of memory and they can somehow understand who of them needs to delete it and who of them do doesn't. So uh, the wor it works in the following way. When you have uh, one pointer to the object and the other pointer to the, to the so-called control block, which contains the, uh, the reference counter. Over here we can see how it looks like. We have the stored object in a heap, and we have the control block with the reference counter. So we have these two nice pointers. And uh, the reference count the counter mechanism works in the... It's, uh, a bit simplified version of explanation of how it works, but in general, every time a shared pointer copy constructor is being called, the counter is incremented. Every time a shared pointer assignment operator is called, the counter of the right-hand pointer is incremented and the left-hand pointer is decremented. Mind you, it's a copy assignment, not the copy constructor. Mm. And uh, every time a shared pointer destructor is called, the ref counter is deleted. Once it reaches zero, the object is being deleted by the, by the last survivor. So, meanwhile, it looks like an ideal tool, right? You create a shared pointer, you pass it through the code, profit. You don't need to delete anything, everything is amazing, just, just, just use it, right? If it was true, I wouldn't be talking about this thing today, probably. So... The first thing I want to talk about is the cost of copying a shared pointer. Quite often I can see in, in the different code bases, I can see this, this, this code when we have this function, do something very important, which receive the shared pointer by value. And honestly, it look, look, looks amazing. Like what, can, what can happen over here, right? Uh, so in order to check what's happening, I prepared this uh, to uh, two functions. One of them is receiving the pointer, the shared pointer at the integer by uh, value, and another one by reference. 
don't mind this uh, void uh, thing. It's just to make sure it's not compiled out and that, 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 that there is no compilation warnings. So I ran over this functions a few, few times, if I'm not mistaken. I'm doing, so basically I'm iterating over, over M and calling either by value or by reference. I have a weird driver, driver program run that, that, that gets the, 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 the number of iterations from the, from the command line and goes over it. And then I measure how much time it takes. So the results are a bit weird, right? If I do one million copies, I, ha I get more than 3.6 milliseconds. And if I do references, I go to microseconds. Well, some of you folks might say, you know what? Don't do one million iterations, right? But if you, it, it's really hard to, to control the amount of iterations, copies you do, because you know, it's a pointer. And usually if, 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 we, ref if we see Short pointer is is is, is, a, re is a replacement for other pointers. If smart pointers have to replace the raw pointers. It doesn't have to be that that expensive, right? So uh, what happens? The, the the this is the the thing that is designed by by the creators of the of the C plus plus standard because we do want to share these uh, short pointers between the two th two threads, right? where two threads can point to the same piece of memory, right? And uh, if we do it, we need to keep the track of the number of shared pointers pointing to this object to the in the memory. And uh, if we're going to do this, we need to save this. To, we need to make this uh, counter atomic. And uh, copying and, and incrementing and decrementing atomic uh, variables is much more expensive, much more expensive than doing the same for regular integers. By the way, if your somehow your CPU doesn't support atomic operations, you will probably have a mutex over there. So, have fun. Mm. Next. Apparently, I'm not the first one who saw these issues with the copying of uh, up of short pointers, and there were a few approaches attempts to fix this issue. So the GNU implementation has something called the mm, locking policy, which decides whether the shared point implementation is supposed to use atomic variable for the incrementation, for, for, for tracking the amount, or the regular one. So they do it based on the fact if the pthread, POSIX thread create function is imported into the program. Honestly, I, I tried to follow this, this train of thoughts, but I didn't manage to understand what happens if, let's say, the, your code doesn't use POSIX threads and simply calls some syscall. I don't know. Technically, it's possible. I don't know why I would ever do it, but it's, it is possible. Also, I'm not sure I understand what happens if, let's say, I have a shared object that, use, <clears throat> that uses uh, shared pointers, and this shared object is built without bit POSIX uh, support. No clue what happens. Uh, LLVM is much simpler. They just make sure if the flag libcpp has no threads. If it's on, no atomic. For Visual C++, <laughs> I don't know. So uh, I would suggest passing uh, by reference, sorry, by, by value only if you're passing to another thread or you expect it has to to be passed to another thread. Another one is memory allocation. So uh, let's take a look at this code. I create a shared pointer. I pass a new int. And uh, the question is how many allocations I do over here. Probably you all folks know that it's two memory allocations. Again, it happens because the first time I allocate the object, is there in the heap, and the second time I have to, <clears throat> I have to create the uh, uh, the control block, and it has to be on the heap so that all the ref all, all the instances of the shared pointers pointing to the same object can update it in real time, right? So this is how I do two memory allocations for one object, and as you guys know, memory allocations on the heap are quite quite expensive, right? 
At least because we do it a syscall, which is expensive by the definition. Okay. What shall I do? Huh? Do you hear me? Is it better? Cool, cool, cool. Anywho, this contraption is not that good. So, uh, yeah, thank you, man. It's, it's like, it's completely different experience. <laughs> oh, seriously, no jokes. No jokes. I don't know who invented it. So, anywho, <clears throat> so we were talking about the fact that we have two, two memory allocations, right? So, we, how we can fix it? Make sure, right? So, make sure it does the following. We pass, we, we talk, tell it this function what kind of object we want to store in the shared pointer, right? And what it does, it basically calls the, and we pass the argument, 42, and it creates this, it calls the, uh, the, uh, the constructor of this object, in our case it's int, within make, make shared. And this is how it allocates one continuous piece of memory for the stored object, in our case it's 42, and the control block, right? So in this case, we still have two pointers, but they're pointing to the same, like almost the same piece of continuous memory, right? And this is how we save a bit on, on, on memory allocation. And uh, as, a, uh, as, as a bonus for this thing, since we have, uh, since we have uh, uh, all this memory packed within the same continuous piece, Theoretically, the gods of uh, you know CPU caching might help us a little bit to cache this data much better because we have less level of indirection. Not sure. The theoretically, it might happen. So another one: the reference cycles. Let me show you an example. It's a bit tricky. So let's say we have this struct A, which has a shared pointer to the B, and we have B which points to the A through a shared pointer. So we create this, uh, this, uh, <clears throat> this cycle where B points to B, sorry, A points to B, B points to A, and it is never, sorry, it looks like this. This is very simplified memory layout, and uh, it is never being released, right? So in order to fix it, the standard CPP library provides us something called weak pointer. Now, weak pointer, it doesn't actually. Sorry. Closer, like this. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, thank you very much. I'm, I'm not very good in dancing. I know it's very important to keep the distance, the same distance, but microphone is something. Very, very new to me. I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to. Is is it good like that? Cool. Thank you. So uh, <clears throat> the C plus plus library provides us with the weak pointer. Now, weak pointer uh, on the opposite to the shared pointer, it does not have does not own the memory. It is pointing to the to an existing shared pointer and keeps track if it's still alive. And uh, in this case, we replace the struct B pointer to a weak pointer. Now, A actually holds B, while B kind of points to, to an A. And on, on, on the right side, we have this uh, test program, test function, that creates all this setup with the reference cycle prints the number of usages, just, just for, for the information, and also I print the, uh, the pointer of, uh, of A that we're pointing to. And uh, voila, both constructors are being called.
So we kind of we, we kind of fixed the issue, right? Now 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 it's good. But the question is how to use the uh, weak pointer. So weak pointer have this amazing function, this method called lock, which creates a shared pointer, and then we can simply use it, right? Through through a fool. However, if the strong pointer is already dead, then 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 we simply get an undefined behavior. On, my, on Linux, it will be some sort of segmentation fault. On other operating systems or platforms, will be your favorite crash. So, another option to fix it is to check if the weak pointer is not expired, and then to lock it and use it. However, it might lead to potential data races. So it's it's not good because you can check if it's expired, and in another thread, it will be not expired, and between these two function calls, it might get expired. So, bad, bad. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that. Another option is to do the lock. Check. The lock will create the shared pointer, and then we will use it. Now the trick is that the standard library mm, promises you that this locking will happen in some sort of atomic way, which the standard does not actually, as far as I know, does not actually specify, but this Turner operator that you can see has, is supposed to happen in a uh, in a uh, atomical way, so you, you can you can use it, right? So this is how you use weak pointers with shared pointers. Now, by now this thing became a bit a bit more complicated, right? Like we have these shared pointers. Huh? I think there is try lock. I'm not sure. I remember what it does. I was a bit disappointed after expired and lock. So, like, try lock was a bit too too far from me. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> so now we have this uh, weak pointer and uh, share it, make share it, right? Like, the best two features together, right? We 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 save time, we save memory allocation on make share it, and we are, and we and we do not have reference. We break the reference cycles via the weak pointer, right? Let's see what happens. So this one is a bit more tricky, so be with me. I have this struct A that holds a, uh, an array of characters, which I fill with AAA, just, just for the nice printing. And, I, and uh, I have a pointer to the B, while B, as usual, has a weak pointer to the A, right? Now this... Uh, I have this weird con contraption where I create a uh, shared pointer to the A, shared, shared pointer to the B, then I connect them, two of them, right, as I did in the previous example, and return the weak pointer out of the function. So, uh, and over here I print if, if what returned, if I can use it, how many, the, here I try to lock this weak pointer, I get the strong pointer, I count the number of references to the A, which is supposed to be zero because the strong pointer is not returned from the original function create make shared and return weak pointer. And I print the raw pointer. And the last thing that I do, last but not least, I print the value of this STR that I created in the previous slide. Previous minus one, that one, right? So theoretically over here, this raw pointer is supposed to be we're supposed to crash or, or have some gibberish or something, right? It's supposed to be dead by now. So here are the results, and the result is the following. I have one reference to the A, then I exit the function, I call the destructor of A, I call the destructor of the B, I return for the create, make, share, and return weak pointer function, I have no references to the A, the strong pointer that I create via the lock is a null pointer. However, A still points to the memory, and the memory is not freed. Well, when, when I discovered that, I was a bit surprised. Sure. Huh? Oh, that, 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 that's one is a bit tricky. I know what you're talking about. Theoretically, it might be freed, but, the, but, but it doesn't mean that the... Uh, yeah, yeah, let me. So, 
what, they're, what, 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 what is being said is that when the, for those maybe who, who, does, who doesn't know, when, the, when we call the free, it doesn't mean that the operating system is expected to, let's say, to zero the memory, right? The memory still, can be still there, and this is one of the reasons we have this nice, nice undefined behaviors once in a while, right? Uh, I, I did not want to make this slide too complicated. I tried to do the same with, let's say, defining my own uh, free delete that will zero the memory. Like, just if, if I put it over here, this example would be completely weird and then blasted. So it, it does not delete it. Like, the free is not being called. And this is why. Because if we create the shared pointer via make shared, we have a continuous piece of memory, as I said before, for the both the object and the control block. And uh, if I create a weak pointer, it means that if the shared pointer will delete the object and it will delete the control block, the weak pointers that pointer to this that point to this object will not be able to understand what's happening because they have no data to point to, and as a result. This memory will be still there up until we have an instance of big pointer pointing to this shared pointer, okay? And uh, basically this is what the C++ standard says. If any weak pointer reference references the control block created by the make shared after the lifetime of all shared, or shared owners ended, the memory occupied by the T persists until all weak owners get destroyed as well, which might be undesirable if size of T is large. So, like, we have the two features that apparently don't live together very well. So, what actually happens, um, shared pointer, when it's being deleted, it will call the destructor for the object that is being in the that is being stored, but the free will not be called, right? It will not call the delete, it will call the explicitly the destructor, but will never delete it um, up until the moment when it can free the whole memory. Regarding the control block, I the control block is not specified by the standard, right? It's some it's some object that every implementation defines and decides how to do it. So maybe it's just a just 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 a uh, an integer or maybe some additional metadata, right? So it's, it's not deleted and it's not freed. It's not destructed, I'm sorry, and, and, and not freed. The control block? No. The object, yes. The object, yes, but the memory is not freed. Uh, the reference uh, block is not destructed and not freed up until it happens. So with all this, from my point of view, complications, I want to add a few other considerations. The actual design problems. Uh, Mike, who has been talking before me about the sh smart pointers, already pinpointed that, that the shared ownership, it kind of contradicts the signal ownership principle. And uh, as uh, Sean Perrin said, shared pointer is basically comparable to a global variable, which, you know, you just pass around some, some, some weird pointer and you never know who, who owns it and when it dies. From my experience, the only, the only good reason probably to use it was with the Boost ASIO. They had a lot of examples of using shared pointers. I know that it's possible to do it without shared pointers, but with them, it makes it a bit easy, all this asynchronous programming. Besides that, it's hard for me to imagine an actual reason to use it. So, the recommendations. Try to follow the signal, the, the single ownership principle. Uh, give preference to using objects with uh, automatic uh, storage duration, aka don't use pointers if you can. If you need a pointer, do unique pointer. And uh, if you use shared pointer, keep in mind all these things that I have been saying for the last few minutes. And thank you for listening. Mm, questions? Something? Sure. The new approach is? Yeah, yeah. If you use new, it will be destructed. 
but you will have two memory allocations. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Sorry? If new, the data will be destructed and deleted, and the control block will be still still alive. Yes, with make sure it will be destructed but not deleted, and the control block will be still alive. Yes. Oh, sure. Sorry, say it again. There was, okay, let, let, let me go back. Maybe I missed something. This one? Yeah. So the object has been destructed, right? The destructor has been called, but the memory has not been freed. And this is why we still have this character array. I, on the purpose, use a plain old data, because if I have had, let's say, a std string there, the destructor would call the destructor of the std string and there will be no data. So I use this for, for, the, for, for the exhibition purposes. Again, I know that, as the gentleman pointed out, it might happen even if we actually call free, because memory is not being zeroed. But again, I try to do it with the zeroing. It doesn't work. Uh, questions, something? Sure. To be honest, I, I do not see any, maybe I'm not familiar, but I don't know any complications when passing unique pointer as, as a reference, for example, or you cannot copy it, right? You can just move it into a function, but I, I don't know what, what any problems that it might lead to, except some sort of semantics. Yeah. If, if you want to, let's say, give an access, you do a uh, reference. If you want to move it over there, then probably you have to move. Probably it's not very good to pass a raw pointer via get, because it kind of breaks the, the idea. But again, depends. Anything else? OK. Thank you very much, guys, and enjoy the end of the day.